pew, pew. I scared hey Coco. He scared Coco. Oh, oh no, Coco. It's okay because it's just guys. gravy day, Coco. It's, it's gravy, gravy day. day. Episode 411 of Pass the Gravy. And uh, this is a special two episode week because you guys hopefully have already listened to episode 410 of our uh, live recording of our Darlin' Like a Marlin beer release up at Southern Star Brewing Company. We did that on Saturday, put it out on Monday. I am drinking a Darlin' Like a Marlin right now and it still tastes Darlin' Like a Marlin. Robert was even saying before we recorded it, he was like, it doesn't feel like that was like four days ago. It feels like we just did it. Right. Mm-hmm. It feels oh, it so much I miss fun. It already. I felt like it was a whole week. I felt like it was a whole week. Of it was a time. great time. It was a great time. Shout out to everybody that came out. That was that was a lot of fun. And uh, last I heard, we were on the like there was like one keg left that wasn't already um, like plugged in, I guess. So they had like one keg tapped. on reserve. Yeah. Well, I, I guess tapped is is it? It's floated. You floated the keg when you finish it. It's tapped when you just plugged it in. Gotcha. Yes. Nailed it. That's me putting things together slowly. But then we sold a bunch of um, a bunch of the canned version of the beer. It is unfortunately still like only since it was an exclu- uh, a, a, a limited release. It, it's only available at the brewery, uh, three five two five North Fraser Street, up in Conroe. You can still probably get some of the canned version. I don't know if they have any of the. Uh, the, the keg left but uh, if they do you can probably get that through this weekend if if it's gonna make it that long that's what keith was telling us um but shout out to all the gravy gang and even if you're not in the gravy game maybe you're new because you heard about us there hopefully uh you know hopefully you guys are still are still sticking around with us if you found out about us on saturday but uh it was a great time like pat said and uh thanks for buying our beer thanks again to southern star for having us up there we didn't sound too drunk i think that was the most sober i've ever been like leaving Ever. Southern Star but like when I wasn't driving. Yeah. Most like I was pretty solid, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I carefully paced myself on that. The one thing was my uh my GM told me today, he's like, hey dude, you're not supposed to yawn into the microphone. I was like, hey, tell me you don't listen to our podcast without telling me you don't listen to our podcast. Because I do that every fucking week, man. Boom. But he I'm listened. not exactly a professional. But he did listen. Yeah, when I got back, yeah, he's good. like, oh, look who's all Hollywood on us. I was like, bitch, I've been Hollywood. You just don't know. Oh, because he saw, like, pictures instead of it? Or... Yeah. Actually, his big thing was like, oh, you took a picture of Rod Ryan now? Are you too big for us? I was like, yeah. I'm pretty fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. Like, uh, shout out again to Rod Ryan for coming out there. Tessa yeah, Barria that was awesome. As well. She uh she hung out and uh, it was a lot of fun, man. It, everybody up there at Southern Star is kick ass, and uh, it was just cool to see like it was our family back together again. It was the first one that we've all done, the three of us live, at like at, like, at a location since the pandemic began. So it was a family cool. reunion. That's what I thought so too, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, let's let's move on and start the pod. Let's get into the pre cum segment now. Um. We on the on Night by the Buzz today we debuted a uh, song from Volbeat. I can't tell you the name of it. Probably should have known that, but um, it had the saxophone in it, which led me to think like like I really <laughs> feel like anytime you throw a saxophone into any song, it immediately improves the song. Doesn't matter what what kind of song it is, it, like, throw a saxophone in it, it's better. Um, but is the saxophone the classiest instrument there is? Because I thought of a couple of other ones that I feel like may be in the running for it, but I think classy saxophone, because when you think like Christmas music, here's why. Because Christmas music, like anytime you're like, you hear any Christmas carol or Christmas song with like just an instrumental saxophone version, you're like, now that's a classy version of that. So maybe that's what made me think that. But uh, piano, I would say, is in the running. A harp. Piano is the answer. Piano is the classiest one. What about a violin? Violin works best as an accompaniment to the piano, I think. I mean, when you think of I don't know, dude, you can play music. that at a, at a restaurant. You get serenaded with a little violin music or cello. Violin, cello, I don't know the difference, but they're close enough. to we're, Those are the same thing. When I say violin, I also include the cello. When you think of classical music, you think of Mozart, Beethoven, all those guys. What do you think of them doing? Sitting at a piano, playing their fucking shit. Piano's the classiest. It's classical and classy. But now I the think sa- piano, let me hear, let me, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. And that's a valid point. Here is my rebuttal to that. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but like, I know a bunch of like dumbasses that can also play the piano. 
like a piano seems like something that just people can pick up you know like i mean you know like you i don't know a lot of people that are just like oh like i'd be shocked if like i would be shocked if you picked up the if you played the piano and just crushed it but like i wouldn't be like as shocked as if you like opened up a violin case and just went to town playing the violin i think that i'd be like what and it's just because like i think the violin seems so classy usually you're wearing a suit when you're playing it that's a solid point that's a solid point but i get like mm. I, I but then like uh i i was telling emma this idea and emma said a harp is super classy too and a harp is pretty fucking classy i would say a harp is more prissy but also I think classy you, i think you've i think you've got me on the violin there i would have said maybe the uh, cello could have been in there until cello, two, violin, same family, same thing. Until yeah, but until two cellos came along and we figured out, oh, you don't have to be classic with the cello; you can absolutely fucking rip it. That's why you call it a violin, and people yeah. like you and I don't know the difference. But also, I mean, the 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 violin you can also put the fiddle in that family too, and those, those people just like to get down if you play the fiddle. That is true. I like the violin. Oh. I I think you you changed my mind though. Violin is. I will say this: saxophone Piano's is classy. Saxophone is the sexiest one. Okay, that was my next question. What is the sexiest instrument? Because I People, think like a saxophone, I mean, you know, uh, Ron Burgundy taught us that the flute is incredibly sexy as well. The yes, flute. The saxophone, you're just like, saxophone's fuck. Now, now people are going to come back at like us and be like, too. So be like well, that. no, dudes, if you play the piano, women love that. If you play a guitar, that's a sexy instrument. No, the saxophone, no, 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 no. if you hear a song and the saxophone comes in, that is the moment when you make your move on the couch. That is the moment when you fucking conceive the child. The saxophone is the sexiest guy. I mean, look up sexy sax man. It's literally a dude that just goes around and mauls and shit and starts playing the saxophone part from Careless Whisper. And it's sexy as fuck every time. Okay, so I think like it's like a it's a classy way of being sexy, also. A saxophone yes. classes up the sexiness. Yeah. So that's maybe why I thought saxophone in the beginning. But like Robert, would you agree with us though on violin being the classiest instrument? No, I have to go with piano. Oh. I think Pat, you had it spot on, and then you lost your way. I think piano is the classiest, sexiest. You guys didn't like the guitar. I think it's the guitar. You know, I know. I think people like, hate the guy with the guitar sometimes. That guy gets a bat. You know, it's like, dude, cool, but, Chet. You brought a guitar. But it's stereotypical for a reason. Because people loved it. Until just because guitarists, guitar. just because guitarists get the most ass, doesn't necessarily mean that's the sexiest instrument. Mm -hmm. Guess it does. No, not every guitar riff I hear goes, "Oh man, that makes me want to bone." But you hear a saxophone, and immediately you go six to midnight every time. True. No, no, especially not if you're hearing "Careless Whisper" for like the thousandth time. Mm. No. Play it right now, and I guarantee dope. you we that's have an like uncomfortable the, moment of silence between us. The stereotypical one that's played a lot now. You, I mean, I think, okay, think of Bill Clinton playing the saxophone. Oh, get, gets my engine running. Probably how he got Monica in the first place. It's definitely how he got Monica in the first place. Or is We're it being the honest. Harmonica is like... No, because when I... Not not to knock ho like harmonica is, but it's like hobo sexy. And Bobo, uh, it's probably the sexiest thing you can play in the boxcar. I'm trying to remember his name right now. Uh, who's the lead singer for Blues Traveler? John. I don't know why uh, you expect me to know that. John Popper. And I'm sorry, I'm never one to. I'm never one to shame people for being too big because God knows I am. But that's the first person I think of when I think of harmonica, and that is as far from sexy as you can possibly be. That dude wears like nine harmonicas and he's like twice the size of me with big old sideburns. I mean, it's a look fat, fat shaming a little bit. It's a look, but it's not a look that inspires a boner. Let me put it that way. Although it is cool when you see somebody that can play the harmonica, like they have the neck thing and they're they rip the it. harmonica. Why? Like the Bob Dylan, like that's always cool. I actually usually, when I think of that, I think back to Mary Poppins. Oh, that yeah. Dude had, yeah. Okay, but back to the point we were talking about. Okay, I think Pat and I, I don't know. Did you change your mind? Are, I think we're in agreement. Violin, classiest. Saxophone, sexiest. Saxophone, sexiest. Robert is thinking piano, classiest. And guitar, sexiest. Yes. 
All right. Well, I guess we're just going to have to agree to disagree on this one, fellas. That was a that was a final little debate, I thought. And then, you know, Michael so it Scott makes him would make America great. Michael Scott would say uh, there would be a stand at base. Because why get a I mean, full orchestra when you could just pay one stand at base guy for a whole day? It's the classiest thing there is. So you can okay. at a Christmas party. Why not? All right. Yeah. Um, that was that was one thing I brought in today. And then uh, I've been watching Malcolm in the Middle. Emma and I have been rewatching that on Hulu. And Malcolm has his friend Stevie, who is in a wheelchair. And if you don't remember Malcolm in the Middle, like all the characters, he's his friend that talks like this. Uh, but Love Stevie's Stevie. awesome. And uh, he, he's in a wheelchair. And that got me to kind of thinking, like, we do have wheelchairs. And I completely understand the functionality of wheelchairs. But what would be really cool is maybe if we and this is a verbal trademark if we have it if it's not invented already but a wheel couch you know like what How if would i you wanted, use that like me and pat could both sit on it and just when we wanted to move we could just move across the room just like you that. guys would no way work well together to move that couch well uh, i but maybe we would learn teamwork through it also i would say that would be just a socialist wheelchair because the other person, everyone would always expect the other person to just do the work and get them where they needed to go. Especially if you've got a uh, middle if seat. You work together. If you've got a middle seat on that couch, people would fight for that one. Just to be like, well, I don't want to do any of the work. Let other people fucking do the work for me and get me to where I want to be. It's a socialist wheelchair. That's what a wheel couch is. You've I disavow. Had some, you've had some bad ideas, Alex, and this is one of them. Um, I just think it'd be fun. Of all the bad ideas you've had, this is definitely one of the bad ideas <laughs> but like like what about those like multiple person bicycles those two person bikes like those are things and a bike and the guy and the person in the, the back tandem always, wheelchair. wow the tandem, let's be inclusive guys the tandem bike at one point or another the person in the back always stops pedaling and and the front person is doing all of the work because they can't see the other person not doing the work it's exactly. human nature so if you can see the person next to you, you're going to probably, you know, you're going you're gonna to evenly distribute the amount of work. Plus, it's just going to cause fights because you're never going to feel like you're evenly distributing the work. Because eventually at one point, if you're both rolling, you're going to start turning to the right or the left. It's going to feel like those uh, windows where you had to like roll the windows in the cars. It's going to feel like that. You're just going to yeah. get tired and be annoyed. You can barely going to move at all. Nobody works out one arm either. Like yeah. unless you're unless you only have one arm, but well, excuse me, trying to be inclusive, guys. Yeah, you that's should apologize. Wheel, wheel couches could be a thing, and maybe uh, maybe somebody else will want to buy in on this. And then here's another like invention idea that I had. Um, why don't we just make a washer dryer where like it washes your clothes? Like it's like it's a combo, and like it just has like a slit that opens and just drops it from the washer to the dryer. Like why not that? Or so why not shop. just one machine that washes and then dries? And yeah, then dries. that too. That is a thing. Is it? Yes, it's a thing. It's an like all in one washer dryer. Just look it up. No. All, all in one washer dryer. That's yeah, I'm going to look it up now. But of, of course, Mr. Moneybags over here knows about it. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Billionaire. I, uh, I just thought, because it's the worst part about like doing laundry is like, fuck, I forgot to move it from the washer to the dryer. And then. Like you have to do a whole nother load because you don't want it to smell bad, and then like you throw it in the dryer, and then you just have to keep keep hitting that. Like it's it 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 would add to it, but I guess if it's already a thing, fuck. I mean, now that I How much see is it, it, like a billion dollars. Uh, most of them are running between a thousand to like seventeen hundred dollars that I'm what seeing right the here. Fuck. <laughs> but think about that convenience. Yeah, I guess so. Yes, but then Front sometimes they, I don't know. Yeah, like it, it just seems like it would make sense. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad it's a thing. I'm glad I it's a definitely thing. want that. So I'm opening Look up, up wheel my couch. Venmo, guys. Look up wheel couch and see if that's a thing. Why don't they just put this on wheels on top of a Roomba? So like, I don't even have to get up to do my laundry. It'll just find me in my house at some point. There you go. Yeah. And it folds it and hangs it too. Basically, what I need in my life is Rosie from the Jetsons. That's what I need. They just need to make those. 
a robot that does my laundry, folds it, brings it to me if I so need it, or just brings it right to the room. Yeah, I need Rosie. Or a girlfriend, because I hear that's what they're for. Wow, dude. Wow. <laughs> but it is. I think that it is what they're for. You're right. Um, yeah, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> At not Pat Dion. Uh, did anybody oh, else shocking I'm single. Bring anything into the to the discussion today. Yeah, why is it that people just can't like listen to you when you give them an answer or tell them what's going on? And I'll tell I, I worded that poorly, but this is what has been going on the last couple of days. Is we just had our soft opening last night, then all day today that works yeah, out. of the restaurant. Sorry, I should clarify. And uh people just you're dealing with calls all the time, and it's like, when do you open? I'm like, well, tomorrow is when we'll but I had been told before that it was going to be late May. Yeah. Well, I just told you it's not like it's, it's the opening of a restaurant. Shit gonna be tomorrow. Back. Or, or just today. Uh, hey, uh, they called me like, Hey, are you open? I was like, um, we are, but not for lunch today. We're doing dinner. We're going to roll out lunch tomorrow. Yeah. But on your Google business page, it says you're open right now. And I wanted to be like, cause on the Google business page, it was our old hours at the old restaurant where it said we closed at two. And I, and I want to be like, actually, ma'am, what you're looking at says we close in five minutes. So I don't know why you're giving me fucking attitude in the first place. But like, you didn't say the, that? No, I didn't. I was just like, yeah, I'm sorry. We're, we're trying to work with Google. It's been a hassle that's not getting fixed. Oh, well, I know how to do that. I can walk you through it right now. No, ma'am. I'm just trying to get you off the fucking phone. I know that's there, but that's the least of our goddamn worries right now. It's fixing Google's hours. We're trying to open a so fucking So you're restaurant. lying to me, ma- you mister. Is that what you're yes. telling me? You're lying. Yes. I lie to people all the time on the fucking phone because it's easier than going through a long speech. And normally they just accept it. I'm just like, and I had this conversation 19 times a day. We're not open for lunch today. We'll be open for lunch tomorrow. We're open for dinner tonight if you'd like a reservation. And 18 people are like, okay, cool. One bitch was like, but I want to come now. Well, you fucking can't. I don't know what to tell you. Just listen to the information I give you. I'm not turning away tables. That's not how businesses work. If I had staff here, I'd let you come in and eat and be a bitch to us all you want. The waiter doesn't nobody here. need to know your name. No. That's the best commercial ever. It's just just follow those rules. I love it. <laughs> So yeah, I just I don't I don't understand why people just can't take information and believe it. They have to come back at you with, yeah, but yeah, but I fucking work here, so I they tell you about their whole fucking day, and you're like, I don't care, man. Those well, ones I have to are... go pick up my son at this time, and then my daughter needs to go to soccer practice, and by the time I get her, it's like I didn't ask, like I didn't ask about your day. This is these are our hours. <laughs> Usually, the ones that do that though Sorry. are the real are like really old people. And in your head, you're like, oh, I don't give a shit. But you're also like, I mean, they're old. They don't even know they're rambling. <laughs> yeah. It's annoying, but I'm not going to be like, oh, okay, bye-bye. Click. Okay, thanks for calling. I'm going to put you on hold. I, I made your reservation five minutes ago in the first 30 seconds of this call. I don't need to know about your day. I have a lot of calls. <laughs> Ma'am, I've missed four phone calls while I was on the phone with you. I'd appreciate if we could wrap this shit up. Let's uh, let's get to the end of this story. That's kind of a not cool, but I just worked it into talking points. Yeah, or there you go. Pre-cum, because I haven't had one of those in five weeks. Robert, did you have anything you wanted to bring in today? Not this week. Wow. Not this week. Wow, Wow, way dude. to be a team player. All right, says a lot. Says a lot. Um, okay, well, let me tell you guys about our new friends at B... Or I guess our new old friends at B's Knees... Honey Company, um, they are back on board as a sponsor of Pass the Gravy. They're going to be sponsoring our Comeback Kids segment this week. It, uh, Bees Knees Honey Company is a local, small family business here in the Houston area. They've got products ranging from gourmet honeys, honey straws, local honey, and pollen to beeswax cosmetics and soaps, even a variety of honey butters. With Father's Day around the corner, they've got everything needed for a great gift, beard butters, solid cologne, soaps, and more. Check out their website for a variety of products and follow them on social media to keep up with their events. Their website, beesneeshoneycompany.com and on social media at Bees Knees Honey Co. and Bees Knees Honey Company. Let them know if you get anything from them that you're supporting them from past the gravy. Let them know that the gravy gang sent you. Uh, use promo code PTG10 at 
checkout for 10% off your order at bees knees honey company Dot com. They have different colored honey straws now, and they look really cool. I remember they used to have like the root beer one was like a darker color, but mm-hmm. now they have like I'm looking at them and they got green ones and blue ones. They look like those old like freezy pops, which is pretty badass. And they've really uh, amped up their website. They got dog treats. They have uh, coming soon. They have dog shampoo and conditioner. How awesome is that? Go check it out. Bees knees honey company dot com promo code ptg at checkout for 10 percent off of your order bees knees honey company dot com let's move on to the comeback kids segment where we shoehorn whatever we feel like and say that it's back in the news this week it's the comeback kid the comeback kid of the week the comeback kid of the week bitch All right, our uh, first comeback kid of the week this week is birds because there's a fucking bird flu in China, and I swear to God, Pat, I'm not doing this again. I'm not, I'm not doing this shit again. Uh, uh-uh. uh, uh, just take me out. Just fucking, just take me out if that's gonna happen again because I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Fucking stop. Fucking, we can't be doing this every time, guys. Well, here's Why, the thing. Like, like, why are all these animals just giving us fucking viral diseases and shit? Chill the fuck out, animals. I get it. We've been assholes for a long time. But chill, just just relax, guys. Just relax. Stop. Fool me once. Shame on me. Fool me twice. God damn it, China. Fuck. Not <laughs> pointing China specifically, but it has happened there now two times. I guarantee you if, like, another global pandemic flew through, Basically, every state south of the Mason Mason Dixon will just be like, "Yeah, dude, we're staying open. We're not. Just, we're not doing just that again." Just kill me. Just take me. Just like guys, we're that again. You want, do whatever you need to to try and not get sick, but uh, we're just staying open, guys. I'm so. Texas I was sure so mad. Be. I was so mad reading it, and I'm like, watch it be like, it's fine. Actually, this is an old story, but like, fuck, don't do it. Don't. I mean, for, for right? the most part, all Blue, these like, well, not like like whatever the whatever the the flu was, bird flu, H N one N or whatever the fucking thing it was like chill H1N1. the fuck out h1n1 chill the fuck out all right all and right just swine chill flu. the fuck out and swine flu you too fuck all off. those they were bad Stay but out. like in the scope of things they weren't aggressively bad like you know more people died than i think the regular flu during those which i'm not even sure of, but like they weren't covid so as long as they keep it as a flu and not a virus, which I think the flu is a virus. Oh. So you know what I mean. You guys get it. Just All you just, medical doctors out there, y'all get what we're talking about. Just, a just medical just, guys talking shop. Keep it over there in China, okay? Just don't, birds. Back in China. Don't. Don't. All right? Bats That's have wings. War- birds have wings. Conspiracy. Just, just don't. All right? Stop. Hey. Hey, don't. All right. Watching you. Look, look at me now. Don't. Okay, birds, chill the fuck out. Everyone promise me right now. Nobody go to China and come back in like the next two months. Just stay here. Or go to Australia instead. They're chill. Australia has nothing. It's too hot down there. Viruses can't survive. Kangaroos punch all the or kick all the viruses right out of the country. It's a fact. And like there's kangaroos in Australia, so. Yeah, that's why I said it. Okay, well, <laughs> and and they have kiwis. And Kangaroos have are are basically just the the Canadian Mountie police, but for Australia instead of Canada. Pretty that's much. all kangaroos are. We actually, I want to start a bill, which I don't know how I would get this enforced in Australia, but I want to start a bill that all kangaroos have to wear some sort of outfit. Like give them little hats or something. A muscle shirt. Mm. Drop their muscles. Ooh, just uh, striped referee shirts. And if people in public get into a fight, you just bounce a kangaroo in there and they break it up. I like that. I think kangaroos can handle more responsibility than we're currently giving them. And if they're not breaking up fights, they can also work at Foot Locker. Perfect. I wonder if it'd be legal to have a kangaroo in Texas. Well, we can have it. If you can have a tiger in Texas, you can probably have a kangaroo. In that's Texas. that's my thinking, right? I would assume so. Like, I'd love to have a buddy who was a kid. Like, imagine if I just had a kangaroo bouncing next to me right here this whole time. 
I think he'd probably try and fight you, but like, yeah, I don't know. Oh no, I would cool. definitely. Re- I mean, I wrestle dogs. I would definitely wrestle right. with my kangaroo. I want. I just want a, a little monkey. I just. I need that. Be cool. Oh, I mean, if I'm getting a kangaroo, I'm definitely getting a monkey to go in the pouch. I mean, come on, Alex, use your brain. Right. Right. All right. Okay. But yeah, I don't know how we got there. Well, because bird flu. They do. They do have birds, but the kangaroos fight the birds off, so we're good. Yeah. Uh, with the flu. Uh, our next comeback kid is um, Hurricanes because it's hurricane season and another just hear me out don't okay don't fuck shit up this year all right just chill the fuck out give us a year we just need it like just give us a year where we're just chill the fuck out all right hurricanes stop i don't want any freezes this year i don't want any fucking snowstorms i don't want any mudslides i don't want any fucking viral diseases going around everywhere and i don't want any goddamn hurricanes so fuck you, Hurricanes. Chill the fuck out this year, right? A message yeah. from past the gravy to hurricane season. Just chill out. And if we have a solid hurricane season where nothing bad happens, then just thank us later. And you know what? We'll just pat ourselves on the back for protecting everybody. But uh, chill the fuck out, Hurricanes. It's not cool uh, anymore. I'm trying to look up the name of what the last hurricane was. Or the oh, Okay, here we go. 2020 hurricane uh, season. Because I think the way they name them is they go alphabetical order. Because I want the next one to just no matter what be Hurricane Karen. Just so it's a name that everyone can immediately fucking hate and nobody will care. I just, I want this to be very congruent for us. Hurricane COVID maybe we could go with. Maybe this doesn't go in order. I don't know. I thought I'd heard that one time. Either way, you know, Hurricane Bitch Face. Let's make it that. Yeah. We just just like mock the hurricanes like that's hurricane hurricane ass face is you start with the a's hurricane ass face and then hurricane bitch face hurricane cunt face hurricane Mm -hmm. dickhead um hurricane ass blood well, that we have to go E after that. Oh, I didn't know you were going to order. Uh, Hurricane uh, Egregious Douchebag. That works. Hurricane Fuck Off. Fuck Boy. Hurricane Fuck Boy. Hurricane Get the Fuck Out of My Face. Hurricane Giant Pussy. That's a good, that's probably a better one. Just Hurricane imagine these like, all right, we're going to live coverage of Hurricane Giant Pussy. And it's like, <laughs> oh, guys. Hurricane Hepatitis. Hurricane, how about you go fuck yourself? <laughs> Hurricane idiot. Yeah, that's, that's a good like, one. It's like, damn it. I don't want to be called an idiot, Hurricane. I better hey, show up. After that, it's Hurricane jerk off over here. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta do, we gotta do, towards we're, we're, the Northeast. We're committed now. We got to do this. Okay, J, K. Uh, <laughs> no, Hurricane, Hur- Hurricane Karen. Oh, we're doing this, Robert. This just became a bit. Hurricane Karen is obviously K. Hurricane loser. Loser. Uh, hurricane, um, uh, muff cabbage, <laughs> hurricane motherfucker. <laughs> that, that's probably better. Uh, and, uh, hurricane, hurricane no, thank you. There you go. Uh, hurricane operation penis. Uh, I don't think that's no. <laughs> Uh, damn it. Oh, is a hard one. Hurricane. Hurricane. Oh my God. Go the fuck away. There. That's a good one. There's uh, hurricane P hurricane pussy or penis pussy. Calling it a pussy would be funny. Yeah. But nobody's going to be scared of hurricane penis. It'll fuck you. I mean, it's just funny. And every so often you got to put a funny one in there. Uh, hurricane quit fucking around and leave me alone. Yeah, uh, God, I, I, I'm not good with the alphabet today. R, hurricane R. racist. Yeah, because everybody hates racists. Yeah. Hurricane racist. Oh, fuck hurricane racist. Uh, then hurricane stupid head. We disavow. Hurricane st- <laughs> or hurricane suck my ass. Uh, hurricane stupid head is really good. Uh, hurricane terrible... Tit face. Hurricane, hurricane tit face. Tit face, yeah. Hurricane tit face. Um, 
Hurricane. Uh, Hurricane Urethra. There we go. Nailed it. Uh, then V. V. Uh, Hurricane, Hurricane Vulva. Hmm. Hurricane Vagina would be funny to say. Hurricane Vagina. Yeah, that's better. I don't know how I my brain went to vulva, but not vagina. Uh, I just skipped the obvious. Hurricane W. Wussy. Yeah. <laughs> Hurricane X not going to give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Hurricane Extremely Disappointing. Ooh, there we go. Uh, Hurricane uh, Your Mom's Bitch. Yep, yep. And then Z, Hurricane... Um... Well, we gotta, we gotta come up with Zit something. face. Zit face, done. I feel like Nailed a lot it. of mine ended Nailed it. face. No, well, I mean, I think that's a good, like, schoolyard, like, you throw a face at the end of anything and it makes it an insult. It's like, I don't want to be that. So, like, yeah, I think it's good. Like, if you want to hurt the hurricane's feelings, I think throw, like, stupid face is funny. Yeah. You guys are welcome for that bit, by the yeah. way, too. <laughs> Robert, you too. How long until you until uh, hurricanes have, like, branded deals? So they're named after companies. Oh, no. The only way you could do that, or uh, the only way anyone you would, would buy do your that, competitor's name? Yeah. So, like, Pepsi buys Hurricane Coca-Cola. Hurricane Cola, so, like, Coca-Cola it ravages wipes out the Gulf Coast. The Northeast. And it's like, oh, no, we hate a Coca-Cola. Bring it like, oh, Hurricane Coca Cola is bringing all this flavor across the country. By flavor, yeah, I do mean, you mean honestly, death? it's, a, ma- it's, a, it's a, probably a, just like a matter of time before somebody tries to do it. I think it will backfire. <laughs> I don't think Hurric- it'll be the smart move at the end of the day. Or like Hurricane this- Snickers displaces 1,400 families. Didn't satisfy. <laughs> <laughs> or like the Storm Watchers cameras. Oh, Hurricane Watch. Or Storm Watcher. That definitely will be sponsored if it's not already. Yeah, at some point. A storm camera for sure. (sighs) Maybe we do that. That's how we get our name out there. We'll just hack it. There we go. Somebody help us figure that out. We we won't. We would obviously never do that, but I mean, somebody might. We wouldn't. It'd be a shame if someone did. And we're, yeah, you're right. Camera 47B brought to you by Passive Gravy Podcast. Um, all right, moving on. Our next comeback here, Robert, you're welcome for getting out of that one. Um, I don't think you guys did. You guys stayed. We did. We got out of it, though. We're out of it now. So you're welcome. Um, our next comeback kid is fans throwing things at players and or behaving badly that they're back now in this dance. So, um, a lot has happened in the NBA mostly. Um, there was a fan that poured popcorn on Russell Wilson, Russell Westbrook, I mean. Um, you had a water bottle throw at Kyrie Irving. Uh, somebody spit on Trey Young, I believe. Um, what else? What else happened? I don't even remember. There was. I don't know lot. what baseball game it was. It wasn't anything thrown at him, but a fan uh, ran on the field at a baseball game, and as he jumped into the stands and tried to run up the bleachers, another fan speared him like Goldberg back in the WWF days. Like, it was the greatest form tackle I've ever seen in my life. Which, by the way, that guy, great hit, kind of a narc. What are you doing trying to capture somebody that ran on the field? Like, let the guy have his shot. Let him try and get away. I I get that, but you also, like, what, what if he has a knife? Like, he, I, I mean, they're thinking player safety, but... He was already off the field. He had jumped into know. the stands. If he has a knife, why are you tackling? Or if he's running towards a bomb, I don't know. I mean, granted, I hope he did it just so he could get on like all the websites because he is uh, right. and, uh I'll, I'll find the link i'll send it to you later i'll tweet it out i think i already did it earlier but then there was it was one got, of the greatest form tackles i've ever seen in my life so we got beer poured on him a uh, knicks player i think and i want to say that was in like atlanta but yeah fans are acting like assholes um one have not people have not been outside for a long time like this is you know this is just uh you're, you're letting all the kids back out on the playground there's going to be some uh some scraps. I'm not justifying it. Um, there's already been a lot of bits done about like, haha, we disavow throwing things at players. There's no place for it. And this, like, yeah, dude, 
you shouldn't do that shit. Like, like that's not okay to do. Like, we're not really going out on a limb by uh, saying like, hey, don't throw shit at players. Like, wow, look how brave we are by saying that. Um, don't throw people, things that people don't spit on people. You just boo people and yell at them and, you know, shit like that. Not racist shit or homophobic shit. Just, just yell and tell them they suck. It's just not, yeah. it's not hard like, hey, to you not suck. be an asshole. Call them stupid face or ass face. You know, the things that we just named the hurricanes. Go with that. That would be great just to like on like pick up on a microphone. You just hear a fan yelling at Russell Westbrook going, hey, dummy. Hey, you, ass face. You big, you big stupid head. You dumb, dumb, dumb brain. I bet you could crack Kyrie though. Like he seems because he like yells at fans. He likes to, to clap back and like chirp. And I bet like you could get him to turn around and chirp at you if you just called him like a dummy head over and over and over again. Or ass so, face. Call him a real smooth brain. <laughs> i think you could probably uh get Kyrie to break i bet you could definitely get lebron to turn around and yell stuff at you but then you'd probably get put on blast and lebron stands would come after you so it's not worth it um but but yeah um throwing stuff at, at players fans acting like an ass in the stands it's like it's awesome that fans are back but yeah guys don't don't do that it is also like as, as somebody that's just in it for the entertainment value though like it has been entertaining it's wrong that they're doing these things but it's been entertaining the last couple of days to see this be covered yeah that's all i'll say I'm, i mean i'm with you on that that's all i'll say on that and i mean yeah. like the russell westbrook you shouldn't have you shouldn't pour stuff on people but it was like it was popcorn dude dude he could have got salt in his eye true if you want to play that game, but like it's popcorn, the water bottle. Yeah. Like that's got like, you know, that's a lot heavier, but popcorn, it's like, it's not okay. No, I'm with like it, of all the things, if something's going to get thrown at you as a professional athlete, I think popcorn is maybe it's not number one. Like I guess a napkin would be better, but popcorn's pretty like high up on the list. Soaking wet with like beer or soda or water or anything like that. You're not getting, there's not really any weight to it. Now, if you threw the whole popcorn thing you probably don't do that, but like, don't do it in general, but like popcorn is like, eh. What somebody, what I would really laugh at if somebody was able to do is uh, sneak in some of that slime from Nickelodeon. And if you could slime a player, that would be like, great. I'm, like, I'm going to be like, I don't care. Like, I honestly, like, dude, suck it up, Kyrie. Like, if that, if somebody, if, if Kyrie was like leaving and just got Nickelodeon slimed, I'd be like, dude, figure it out. He, he gets mad at it. That and was then you, a Nickelodeon show. You get to say, oh, Kyrie doesn't support the kids. Oh yeah, he's mad this at the slime. It. You could just say he was doing it like, like the guy did, did it. Could just say my son wanted me to do that. That's all he wanted to see me to slime his favorite player. <laughs> <laughs> just really flip it around on him. In that case, my favorite player is LeBron. Right, and I really wanted to show my son that I could slime his favorite player for him, for him, not for me. But speaking of LeBron, LeBron James is also a comeback kid this week because just, he's just being LeBron. Just somehow for – we talked about this beforehand. So LeBron left – they were getting their ass kicked against the Suns. And with like five and a half minutes left of the game, he just leaves. What is the phrase? Didn't... When the going gets tough, uh, I think the tough leave with five and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter of a blowout game. Yeah. And his coach tried we, cause so Alex tried to Google it to see what the excuse was because neither one of us had heard. And it was like four different instances popped up on Google of LeBron leaving games early. Yeah, so here we go. LeBron James. Um, this was five hours ago. LeBron James leaves Lakers loss early. Frank Vogel defends. Um, October fourth, twenty twenty, LeBron explains walking off court in closing moments against Heat. LeBron James explains leaving court against Celtics. LeBron James leaving court early against the Spurs. So these are uh, just LeBron. Why did LeBron James leave the court early? You get a little uh, a little Google query out there showing up being like, hey, um, which one did you want? Which story of that? Because this happened so many times. <laughs> um, he's obviously he's a bad teammate. 
bad teammate. He only cares yes. about himself. He's a me guy. Um, he's a guy that says he like plays for the love of the game, but it doesn't seem to be that way when things are going his way. And uh, all I have to say is Michael Jordan would have never in his life walked out on the tune squad like this. Can't say I think the same thing about old LeBron James. I could I could definitely make the argument that LeBron James is the worst teammate in the history of basketball. Because even though there was guys like Michael Jordan that we saw in the documentary absolutely was a piece of shit to his teammates and like went over the line driving them to be great and punched some of them in the face. Literally LeBron at any moment will just get you traded if he can get one of his friends on the team. He'll trade away half of the fucking team that's been there for five years before he decided as a free agent he wanted to go there. And because he can just get someone, he'll just pick, yeah, trade away the whole fucking team. Just get me more superstars. Yep. Every, everywhere he goes, the entire team gets remade because you just have to get rid of everybody to get his friends on the team. Pretty much. Every single fucking time. And he got to bring his yes men in. Like if you're not They're a max contract player, if you're not a max contract player or already one of LeBron's best friends, you're not going to be on a team he joins three years from then. It's just not going to happen. And they're and, uh, they're saying like Frank Vogel, his head coach now in the Lakers, was defending him. People, how could you defend us? Because he wants to have a job on the Lakers next year too. Yeah, like if the Lakers don't come back and win these next two games, and they get bounced immediately from the playoffs, you think LeBron is going to be the one that gets shipped out of town? No, he's going to go. No. You know who I really liked being my coach? Ty Lue. Bring him back in. You know, I didn't get... like him after a while, but yeah, I like bring... him now. <laughs> He's just going to come up with another name. Hey, you know what? Let's try Jason Kidd this time. He's open. He's out there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just funny, like, watching. Like, he has all his own special set of rules. Um, I mean, last week he had – or a couple weeks ago he had lunch or, lunch or dinner with Drake. He broke COVID protocols in the league. He had absolutely no repercussions. Um, well, House. the league said it's, it's because that party – had strict COVID protocol and everyone had to be like accountable and stay socially distanced and have the vaccine. But wait, I'm pretty he sure was, LeBron famously said he wasn't getting the vaccine. He was not socially <laughs> distanced sitting fr- sitting <coughs> at the same table close to Drake though in that picture. Um, but yeah, uh, Danell house though, he was suspended for the Rockets final two games against the Lakers last year for violating COVID protocol. Seems like maybe there's some preferential treatment going on. That's crazy. That's crazy. And I get that there's preferential treatment going on, but just don't pretend that there's not guys. It's just, it's so funny that LeBron is one of the greatest players of all time. And 50% of people can't fucking stand him. Yeah. I hate him because he's such a douche. Like everything he does, unless you're a LeBron Stan, you're like, that's the cringiest douchey thing I've ever seen. Like when he wrote the letter, or not even letter, the uh, Instagram post to 16-year-old LeBron. Right. It's like, you don't get to go back in time, dude. Sup, King. This is you writing to you. Be like, yeah, we know. You're the one writing it. Yeah, <laughs> All dude. the fake injuries. Blaming his teammates constantly, not getting it done when he loses game one of every fucking series. He's just a douche. He's Yeah, fuck LeBron, dude. He's and I would definitely say that bitch. to all the people online that would be like, oh, you'd never say this to his face. God damn right. I would. What's he going to do? I'm going to call him a pussy. What's he going to dunk on me? And then he's and just going to be like, like, yeah, you're LeBron James, dude. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I may be I a pussy. Care. But are you worth $500 billion? No. So but shut up. But I have freedom of speech to call you a pussy. Please hit me so I can have a quarter of that. Yes, I'd like to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying this so you'll hit me. I just want you to know because everyone around you is a yes man that you're a bitch. Also, and a much better basketball games. player than I ever will be or would be, but I don't. Oh, care. and 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 just in general, a you ruined nicer, Space Jam, even though I haven't seen it. You still ruined he's pr- it. He's probably just an all around better person than me too. He does great things for charity. I mean, he kowtows to China, but you know, at some point, you know, he's just yeah, watching that dollar line. Really takes. But uh. But, you know, he's put more people through college than Michael Scott. You got to at least respect that. That is true. That is true. And actually, you would have to do one to do that. But <laughs> it's one more than me. Yeah, I didn't even I didn't even put me through college. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, so LeBron James, a comeback kid, another comeback kid. Uh, Cause we were talking about how, like, I don't know if he talked to the media. There were too many Google searches to like find if he did say why he walked off besides the fact that he's just a bad teammate, but uh, not talking to the media also big this week because Naomi Osaka, the uh, women's tennis player, she has withdrawn her, her name from the French open after uh, she didn't, she declined media availability or me, a media interview, got fined for it, paid the fine. And then uh, she said she was going through some mental health stuff. We're not knocking mental health or anything, but then she, uh, she withdrew afterwards after, uh, after receiving a fine. And she said she didn't mean to make it a big deal the way that it was that she, she wishes that she hadn't made like, it is now like a negative thing. She wishes that it was just like her withdrawing. She didn't want to make such a big scene about it. Um, but I think that really this is a, a like a classic case of like, it's getting skewed or skewed towards like the way that like some, somebody wants to fit a narrative where like people are saying that she's saying she shouldn't ever have to have media availability or any of that. And no, like she didn't say that at all. She didn't go to that media availability. She paid the fine, whatever. I think it's a lot of other people be like, well, why do, why do like athletes even have to talk to the media? It's like, I don't know. Cause that's part of the media's job. And I guess that's part of like part of their job. Like, I don't like going to meetings, but I have to go to meetings. And like, that's part of like doing that. I'm not saying like Noam Osaka should have done that, but it's like, Golf and tennis are two of the sports where you can like make your own money doing that shit. She's fine. I think she was the highest paid female athlete of the, the last year. Uh, so like she doesn't need the money from winning the French Open. She wants to win the French Open, I'm sure. And she's going to have another opportunity to do it. Uh, she's only 23 years old. But I, I, I don't think that it was her being like, fuck the media. I think that she was having some mental health issues. And she just like, instead of going through that with the media she just was like i'm just gonna sit this one out i'm gonna pay the fine i'm gonna do this and now i'm just gonna take i'm gonna withdraw myself from the tournament after getting this criticism of it because i don't want to even have to discuss that and like i think that that like people have just taken that and made it to be so many different things like if you don't feel like playing a tournament you have the money to not play in the tournament like you should be able to not play in the tournament i don't think it hurts anybody i like just think that everybody else is trying like hijack it and make it about whatever they want their story to be it's, it's journalists that are mad that they're not getting the inner. That's what it is. It's, it's right. the, the it's only like, people. You're, if you're a better journalist, just write a story. Like write yeah. a, just be better at writing. And Guess what? This is actually, quotes. this is actually better for you because maybe this could be better. It's probably not better for the sport that she's not there, but instead of just already being able to write up your questions right now about her winning, because she was going to win. She's the most dominant uh, female tennis player right now. Now you're going to have a different one and your job's going to be a little bit harder because you got to think up questions for somebody else. Oh, well, not, not as many eyes are going to be on my column now, Big Doug. Not that many eyes were going to be on your column in the first fucking place. The only thing I wish, I wish after this shit storm came up that she would have been like, you know what? Fine. I'm going to go and I'm going to do it. And I hope she showed up to the press conference and just Marshawn lynched the shit out of all of them to every question. I'm just here so I won't get fined. Right? And it's like, they can't do anything. It's like, she showed up. Like technically, those are the rules. Like, as long as you like show up, you don't really have to answer anything. And just uh, I just I'm or, just thankful for being here and trying to play. Like that's what the Patriots have done forever since Bill Belichick took it. Like I uh, just focused on the next game and just trying to get better every day as as a player and as a person. And I just you know a uh, great job from our competitors. That or it would be great if she just like repeated the question back to everyone. You know, what was your motivation going out there for this tournament? I don't know. What was your motivation for going out to this tournament? Boom. Flip the table. Next, on them. next question. And then bring your own little notepad, start taking notes. Like, wait, what is she doing? What are you writing down? What did your opponent do to make things difficult for you out there in the third set? I don't know. What did your opponent do to make things difficult for you out there in the third set? Well, I didn't play. play. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't play. <laughs> I'm like, what, what is going on? Fuck you. Next question. Hmm? Fuck you. Next question. But yeah, so not talking to the media. That is a uh, is a comeback kid this week, and then our final comeback kid of the week is Bears because there was a fucking video of this lady. I don't know. I don't know where she was. Was it California? Maybe. Who knows? There's bears in California, but um, she fought off a bear and they just like shoved the fuck out of this bear to keep it away from like her like six dogs that she had in the backyard. And yeah, I don't, I don't know if I would have been able to do that. I'd like to think I would, but I don't know. I've not been in that situation and that was a big ass bear. I hope Weezy's in the other room and did not hear you say that. 
I'd like to think I would, is what I said. I mean, it you was, you I mean, in those situations. it's, don't get me wrong. It's still a bit, it's not, as far as bears go, it wasn't a huge bear. Still a goddamn bear. It's still a bear. S- still a bear. And if you guys haven't seen the video, just look up woman shoves bear. So, uh, and, and here's the thing too, that makes it extra scary is, I don't know if you noticed, there was bear cubs there too. Oh, so that, they, they were just going to go for a swim. Like the, the bear cubs ran like at the very beginning when the dogs ran outside, the bear cubs ran off along the wall back to the like out of frame. And all these dogs are coming. So the bear isn't even really doing anything. It's just like pawing at these dogs, like, say the fuck away from me. That lady yeeted that that bear right off the fucking wall. It was well, awesome. yeah, because that bear gets over, who knows what's gonna happen. But yeah, dude. Um, fuck bears. Actually, I mean, bears seem cool, but like fuck bears. Really. I mean Bears in the wild, yes. Bears from Chicago, fuck them. That's that's my thought. And by the way, not a great look for bears. Yeah, Packers aren't having a great look right now with Aaron Rodgers all the shit. Man, that's not a good look for bears. Yeah, not a great look. That's not, that's not a great look. That's not a good omen for bears. What is some woman just going to walk up behind Justin Fields and shove him, and then he's going to be out for the season? Hmm, would be a shame if that happened. He's going to hit a Justin wall. Could that take wall? A hit. Could that proverbial wall be the Green Bay Packers? Who knows? I think that proverbial wall is going to be the Bears coaching staff. But either way. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, Just make sure, Pat, just hold on to like a screen cap of that picture of the lady pushing the bear because you could make it a meme like Aaron Rodgers, lady pushing the bear, the Bears. And then. Thank you. Going to do that right now. And then <laughs> I, like the dogs are just the lions like because they're like, we're just happy to be here. <laughs> all the uh, that's good i like that vikings they're not even in this vikings, vikings are, like, vikings are the, the bear they're cubs the, they're the bear cubs running off. away because they're like shit kirk cousins oops we forgot dude this lady like she literally the more i watch this like an offensive lineman hits hard with the hands and keeps a square dude, yeah base. she was gonna move somebody man like that was a pancake block and yeah, great footwork right there screenshot like, dude yeah, i mean I'm just saying she's got i mean shoulder width apart extends up with the hands that i mean every offensive lineman in the or offensive line coach in the country right now should have that video saved to show to his players when they get back at the end of the summer you think she's better than you right now and get out there and fucking push that sled pussy <laughs> Ooh, just anytime Man. anytime khalil mack gets just like manhandled which doesn't happen often but if it does like then you just put insert whoever's name is over the lady and khalil mack that's an instant meme so just fuck yeah you go. somebody i helped you go viral for a second there oh oh no here somebody make this one for we'll post it It'll be like me on a sunday weekend chores is the bear and you're just like ah, nope <laughs> i was literally about to say me on a sunday but responsibilities is the bear right i everybody oh. make your own make your own lady pushing bear memes at past i got one Pod. this will be fun this week uh somebody send this to our good friend uh raheel ramzan ali and uh the lady is uh him and the bear is uh dirty dishes just make that oh. and send it to him he'll, he'll love that Ooh, ooh, what about this one um somebody make this one uh the lady is robert and the bear is i love you uh, uh, <laughs> our, our, our good friend, Adam Clayton, uh, is the lady. And then the bear is, uh, literally any other fan base or city. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Ooh, um, ooh, ooh. The lady is LeBron people, James. And the, people the, who the aren't bear, on Twitter aren't getting any of mine. <laughs> the lady is LeBron James and the bear is respecting your teammates <laughs> and being a good sport. <laughs> The uh, the lady is Michael Jordan, and the bear is literally the smallest insult you can think of. <laughs> <laughs> I think I mean these are all winners right here. So we're giving you guys free viral content. I'm loving what we're doing today, and I have a feeling Robert I, hates I, it. I think so. I think so. <laughs> oh, that's all right, good. Moving on. Moving on. Um, let's get to the what would Jesus do segment now. Growing up, we had the what would Jesus do bracelets. 
that they never told us what he would do. It was not like a fortune cookie situation. So uh, we just decided we're going to tell you what Jesus would do. So Jesus in a situation in today's times, uh, in 2021, use the hashtag PTGWWJD to at pass the gravy pod on Twitter. I'm at Alex J. Middleton. Pat's at Nat Pat Dion. Robert is at Robert Barbosa03. Hashtag PTGWWJD. We're only going to do this segment until you guys stop sending these in and we are running low. So if you have any WWJDs, send those bad boys in. Hashtag PTGWWJD to at Pass UA Pod. This is the What Would Jesus Do segment. Jesus, Jesus, what would Jesus do? Jesus, Jesus, what would Jesus do? Put him in a situation in a matter of time. If you brought the stream, do you think he'd make it rhyme? So think about this crazy world in which we live today. And how would Jesus handle it in any given way? All right, this week's What Would Jesus Do comes to us from our buddy Josh Posados at Josh underscore Posados on Twitter. And Josh says, would Jesus participate in the wave at a baseball game or maintain his holy stature and not partake in such an atrocity? Why, why do you hate fun? Now, Jingle Blake did weigh in on uh, on Twitter, our good buddy Jingle Blake at the sexy bananas and he says that uh he would walk on that wave probably here's the wave participate in the first one maybe the second one after that let it die but people that's who the thing really what gives it a bad name wave. the wave is it's nice initially but the thing that ruins the wave is like let's keep it going again and like it's usually the guy that gets the like he starts it the first time, and so he's like, "That fuck, dude, that was the best rush ever. I got the whole stadium to do the wave. And so then he gets a little, like, I want that feeling again. I want that. Let's do it again! One, two, three! And it's like, okay, cool, all right, we did it. Neat. All right, bud, now let's sit down and watch it. All right, one, let's go! And you're like, <laughs> okay, this is the fourth time man settle that like and i think it's that guy or the guy that's like around him that wants to get that rush and i feel like there's wave guys that have started it and after you start it you're probably chasing that high for the rest of your life you know that's the fix you're chasing you know some people it's heroin some people it's crack cocaine some people it's alcohol some people it's starting the wave and i really i really am not even kidding i think that that's probably how that starts it's just like you're like oh dude like, cause that guy got that wave started. You know, that guy, the next day at work was like, bro, bro, Robert, Pat, last night went to the Astros game. It was the third inning. They're playing the Red Sox. Altuve comes up to the plate, bro. I stood up. I was like, let's start the wave. One, two, three. Whole stadium did it. Whole stadium did it two times around. And they're like, that's tight, dude. And like, nobody else ever cares that you started the wave. But like, you are like, it was so fucking cool. I feel like I should be like, I gotta get it. I gotta get it back. I gotta get it back. And then the best is when you watch the guy that's like, it's already faded out. And then people are just like, ah, I'm not doing it. Like that's yeah. my favorite version of the wave is like, <laughs> okay, dude. And then it's just like a three quarter stadium wave. I don't even, when the wave comes by and I barely ever go, but when I do, like, I don't even stand up anymore. It's my adult cynicism. I just, I can't get excited for anything in life. I'll participate, but it's just like, whoa, I just throw my hands up as it passes I am. me. The more likely I am to participate. I don't get that's drunk a, that's at, another, at public like, sporting events. It's too expensive. Well, if you've been drinking beforehand. Yeah, but if I do that, then I end up having to piss during the game like nine times. I don't like missing the action. If I paid for a ticket, I'm getting my fucking money's worth. I don't care if it's a five dollar ticket in the nosebleeds. No, I got you. Well, that would be a funny um like how likely I am to participate in we're doing a lot of just visual stuff for all of our listeners right here. So I appreciate it. But uh, like a little graph of like how likely I am to participate in the wave. And it's just like, how drunk am I? How many times the wave is gone? And it's, but it's like, how drunk am I goes to a certain point because then I'm passed out. So I'm not likely at all <laughs> to do the wave. <laughs> so it's just like, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up, but then I'm done. But then it's like, how many times? Probably one or two. Like, but like the first or second time doing the wave, if you're not like around the beginning, you're like, fuck yeah, it's coming our way, boys. Let's get ready. Let's get up. Oh, here we go. Woo! Done. That's what it should be. And, and then like, it's usually you get one or two of those and I'm out. The, the, the Y axis is how drunk I am. And the X axis is how many times has the wave already gone around? 
So, I, I mean, I don't know. I think Jesus would be, like you said, in favor of fun. Yeah, he'd do, it, he'd do it once like, twice. Guys, we're going to get three max, okay? After three, nobody fucking cares, Chuck. No one cares anymore, dude. All right? <laughs> Sit down. You got it going, dude. Congratulations. Jesus would come like, up with better stuff to do, though. Come on. He's like, no, 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 no. Chill out. Jesus, like, Jesus would get, like, four sections in unison as the opposing pitchers in the windup to just yell ball at the same time and fuck with the guy's head. But nicely, and, like, he would forgive people for bad things, too. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think Jesus would be really much of a heckler. That's not heckling. That's just trying to root, root, root for the home team. I feel like Jesus would be for the wave. He would he would participate in the wave, but not definitely. A couple times, but there would be a hard stopping point, and I think there should always be a hard stopping point in the wave. And you know what? Maybe that's like Pastor Gravy's contribution to like we like normalize the wave, guys. Wave acceptance here, okay, guys. We're all about wave acceptance on this podcast. It's okay if your friend wants to do the wave, but just know that like you give it two, three max. If it's a solid like wave going around the full stadium twice. That's cool. You can go a third time. After that, like, no, 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 no. And, like, start, like, physically just being, uh-uh, uh-uh. Like, don't push anybody, but just no. no like, push back to the wave so people know, like, oh. Be a breaker, keep it, you know? Keep it between innings, too. Keep it between innings. I don't need some people standing up doing the wave in front of me that, as, the th- as the three, two pitch is coming in, you know? It's, all about, it's a lot about timing, too. You're right. Yeah. But just normalize big. All right, last one. Last one. Okay? Not that you can tell the whole stadium that, but maybe we need to coordinate it more that way. The I'm in favor. That on, like, the Jumbotron is just like, all right, last one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, guys cut stop. it out. <laughs> and if we could just stop the wave, that'd be great. Whoever, we'll like, say the stadium announcer is. One time when I was a teenager, I was a part of a wave that ran around the stadium seven times, and that was pretty sick because everyone was into it. But this was pr- before, like, when it became popular to hate the wave. Before the nickel backing of wave. But before, was it done? before social media really exploded. Like, we had MySpace back then. That was it. Maybe you, a little bit yeah, of Facebook. You didn't have Twitter to make fun of things going on during the game then. All you had was the wave. And then you'd talk about it at school the next day. That was it. The wave was all we had. It was a simpler time. And it, it that's really, time. maybe that's why people still hang on to the wave because it reminds them of the good old days. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking I still about think the bad a- stuff from the good old days. I'm talking about, you know, going to the ball game with your dad, not Jim wave, laws or anything like that. The wave does feel like a young man's game, though. At a certain point, you're like, ah, dude, be an adult. Stop loving things. You get to that, that yeah, that, <laughs> that daditude about it where you're just like, just hmm. die inside already, man. Stop enjoying life. You got bills. Sit down. I can't see. <laughs> My feet hurt from being on them all day. Most people turn 80 years old and grumpy at 80. I did it at like 23. Well, you stuck to it, and I appreciate that. <laughs> Consistency I'm is not, key. I'm nothing if not consistent. All right. Um, let's tell you guys before we get to our not cool segment, uh, our not cool segment can basically be anything that's happened to you throughout the week that makes you say, Hey man, that's not cool. You can contribute to the segment by, uh, tweeting us at past great pod. Use the hashtag PTG, not cool. Uh, not cool. segment is brought to you by our good friends at Southern star brewing company. I am drinking a Southern star. Pat's drinking a Southern star. Southern star is fucking kick ass. We did our last broadcast up at Southern star, uh, for our darling, like a Marlin blackberry sour beer release. It's fucking awesome. It is still, um, there's a little bit of it available still in the tap room if you'd like to go and buy what's left of it. 3525 North Fraser Street up in Conroe. Also this weekend, now we got a little taste test of this. Their, uh, their lemon pie, uh, their lemon pie sour. It literally tastes like lemon pie. It's it ridiculous, just guys. like lemon pie. It is awesome. And uh, we, we had Dave on the podcast last week or uh, the last episode, and he said, he was just casually chilling and like just drink nine of them because it's that easy. I, I was joking about how the darling like a Marlin is just, it, you can just sip it like juice. And uh, the lemon pie is very much the same right, in, in that aspect of that. But uh, they got that, that 
at Beer Release going down this Saturday. 3525 North Fraser Street up in Conroe. If you want to go hang out at the brewery, let them know you're part of the Gravy Gang. With the Gravy Gang Stitcher, they'll hook you up and uh, they will, they'll, they'll know what you're talking about. Southern Star Brewing Company, something for everybody at Southern Star, whether it be the Bombshell Blonde, the Strawberry Bombshell Blonde, which is my favorite until the Darling like a Marlin came out. Um, they, got, they got a little bit of something for everybody. IPAs, low cal, low calorie IPA, the, the uh, Southern Brunch. If you're not a beer guy or gal, then uh, try that. It's like a beer mimosa. It's pretty awesome. But you will find something for everyone at Southern Star Brewing Company, the best beer in the entire world and the sponsor of Pass the Gravy. And then also this episode of Pass the Gravy is brought to you by our good friends at Little M. Little M, formerly just Little M Air Fresheners, is now Little M Shop, Little E M Shop. Dot com. They got all the best stuff. If uh, your air fresheners, uh, if, if your air fresheners are little baby back tree, little baby back bitch trees, get rid of them. You want an awesome air freshener that's going to do the job right and not destroy the environment because those little baby back bitch trees, uh, don't look this up, but they kill like a billion trees to like make one air freshener. I don't know how they do it, but they waste a lot of trees to do it. Little M air fresheners doesn't do that. And they've also got some awesome other stuff in the little M shop. They have shirts with embroidered sayings. Uh, they got one that just says tired. They have one that says main character. Uh, I have one that says, don't talk to me. That one would be really good for Pat. Uh, they, mm -hmm. have, they have a bunch of really cool uh, shirts and stuff at the littleemshop.com, littleemshop.com. They have unisex fit in there uh, for everybody. They also ship for free. They got stickers. They got notebooks. They got everything at littleemshop.com. Not just air freshers anymore. Littleemshop.com for the best stuff ever. Littleemshop.com. This is the not cool segment. Not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. My not cool is so um I I normally go on Amazon every couple of like months or weeks or whatever how long it is, but I buy the same type of uh to go cups. So like in the morning I make my coffee in the Keurig as I'm getting ready. Uh, you, you just hit the thing. It's on. It's ready to go. And I have these like kind of like they're 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 solid. I don't really look like they're cups, you know. So I fucking ran out of them in the middle of the week last week, and I just swung by H E B and grabbed the H E B ones to uh, to use until uh, until those are out, and then I'll order some more. But like Monday or Tuesday was the first day that I used them, and as I'm going to work, like I had filled it up. I was walking to my car. And I'm like in the elevator and just the side of the cup is just soaked all the way through. I'm like, what, like, what are you, are you made of paper? What are you doing? Yes, and it was it like, literally it was, is made of paper, but it was a coffee cup. It was a coffee cup. Like that was what the picture on it was for, like putting coffee in and paper. shit, but it was just soaked all the way through it. And I was like, how is a cup that is meant to contain liquid just going to be soaked through it with liquid where then I had to get to work. And I thought it was about like, I was like, this is about to just have, I'll have a hole puncture out of it. So I had to go like pour it into one of the fucking little styrofoam cups we have at work. But I was like, what is the purpose of fucking being a cup if you don't do the one thing that I need a cup to do? And that's like reliably hold my shit. Why don't you do just it. have a coffee mug, just one instead of buying multiple cups? He enjoys, the environment. He, yeah, he enjoys creating trash. Fuck you, glaciers. <laughs> Fuck you, Norway. I don't know, because I'll forget them, and then it's easier to just be like, boom, done with that. How will you You're forget bad. them? I don't think you're very forgetful. I already person. carry a water bottle around. I have a water bottle that I take in every day, but like, I don't want to carry two things. That's pretty much what that is. <laughs> Get a backpack. Put the water bottle a in the backpack. Put the coffee mug in your hand. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I just, I, it's just easier to spend the $15 or whatever it is like every other month on fucking cups. And it's, it, I mean, it's, it's, it. it's you forget really it, not... Oh no, whatever. But like, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know, dude. Fuck that. Fuck that cup. All right. So I'm, I'm out on those cups. H-E-B brand cups. I'm done. Right? I hope you forget every day for like a week and a half and have to keep using them. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna i refuse but fuck that was, do you that not really do you own any coffee cups or coffee mugs yeah but i'm not gonna like take a mug in my car what what do you mean you're not gonna take a mug like just like car? the glass coffee mug ceramic but go on 
Yes. It's got to have like a top for it. I'm not going to. No. Fucking... No, bro. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know, man. I'm not doing that. I got a way I do my coffee and that's the way I do it. And um, it was fucked up the other day. So I was pissed off. And that's my not cool. <laughs> your cup of coffee. All right. So chill the fuck out, coffee cups. All right. Make your coffee cups better. All right. I should have to put a fucking sleeve so my hand doesn't get burned. And it shouldn't just melt through the coffee cup. Okay. Alex's political slogan is make coffee cups great again. Doesn't seem that hard. <laughs> Doesn't seem that hard. You get what you pay for. You probably cheaped out on it. That's why. I did it. I bought the H-E-B once. No, nah, you cheaped out. You cheaped out. No, fuck, man. Just, just give me a coffee cup with a lid on it and I'm good. Um, our next segment is the answers segment. Uh, we will answer any question that you ask us. If it's a high thought, something you saw on the interwebs that you would like our opinions on, if you want relationship advice, anything at all, hit us up at Pod on Twitter, hashtag PTG Answers. I'm at Alex J. Middleton. Pat's at not Pat Dan. Robert is at Robert Barsbosa03. There's a fly in this room, and I don't like it. Um, Did you just but, say uh, Barsbosa? Robert Cause Barbosa. Because I, I think we just came up with Robert's DJ name, Robert Barsbosa. Robert Barsbosa. No, it's Robert <laughs> Barbosa. But um, hashtag PTG answers at Pass the Gravy Pod on Twitter. The answer segment is brought to you by our good friends at Alamo Remedy CBD, alamoremedy.com. They uh, have all kinds of awesome CBD products. They have their new CBD lip balm for just $9. They have a bunch of other products. Most of them priced at $17.99. The uh, tincture oil, the gummies, the cucumber melon lotion, the capsules that you can just take once a day. Those are going to really help you out. And uh, they also have the hemp flower as well. It's not weed. It looks like weed, kind of smells like weed. It'll get you chilled out. doesn't give you that weird awkwardness in, in, in public. You're not going to have the paranoia or the weird foggy headedness. You'll, you'll just be chilled out and able to do everything like you normally would. The hemp flower, I believe, is $19.99, alamoremedy.com. And uh, use our promo code PTG at checkout. You're going to get 10% off of your order at alamoremedy.com. Promo code PTG at checkout, 10% off your order. And uh, that's not just your first order. That's every order from your first throughout a billion of them. If you order anything from Alamo Remedy, let us, or they'll, they'll send us an email letting you letting us know you supported us and the podcast, and uh, we'll give you a shout-out on the next show, Alamo Remedy dot com promo code ptg at checkout and if you get anything from them tag them when you get it alamo remedy cbd and at alamo remedy on twitter and instagram let them know you're supporting the people supporting the podcast alamo remedy cbd dot com or no alamo remedy dot com excuse me let's move on to the answer segment well, just answer the question why don't you just answer the question be honest no big deal yeah answer answer the question don't change the subject just answer the fucking question yep, yep, right. Any questions? All right. Our first question comes from our podcast son, Skylar Lester. Skylar! At OMG, it's Skylar on Twitter. We saw Skylar on Saturday at the Darling Like a Marlon Beer release. Good to see you, son. Uh, and he asks us, do Canadian kids also have fake girlfriends that live in America? I initially thought yes, and technically it is yes, but I think their girlfriends live in Alaska. They're fake girlfriends. You got to go farther north. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know. They might live in like Buffalo. <laughs> Minnesota. No, I think, the, I don't know. In my head, the whole thing about it's just farther away. So like, Maybe if they're on like the East Coast, Alaska seems harder to get to. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, or like, but like, or if they're on the far West Coast, like above, like where Seattle is. I don't know what Canadian cities are over there because nobody gives a shit about Canadian geography. Right. Uh, right. If they're over Vancouver. there, maybe okay, Vancouver. Yeah, maybe those ones. If you're from Vancouver, then your girlfriend's in Buffalo, on the mm -hmm. far other side of the country. What about, what about like Iceland or Green, uh, Greenland, I think? Could do that. Say Greenland also. Oh, yeah. Greenland's more one. exotic. Oh, you know, she's uh, she's First Nation there, but oh. she's off on a reservation, so I don't get to see her too often. 
She's a greenie up there in Greenland, over there. Yeah. Oh, she's off in Nova Scotia. I could put you on the phone with her, but with her weird accent, you'd never understand what she was saying. Oh, she's in Manitoba, but I don't know. <laughs> you never know with him. She's in Montreal, but she all she knows is speak French. Her head flaps just a little bit different than the rest of ours. We use the, I like that we're Irish. <laughs> it's yeah, gotten into my, like a Canadian Irish at that point. It does everything. My my Canadian you accent did it and starts then I out good. Took it. And it just it just it slides more Irish. You gotta keep saying bud and bud, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, right. Sorry. <laughs> what the fuck was that one? I don't know. Sorry. Why why'd you get a deeper oh, oh, voice yeah. when you started that oh, one? Oh yeah. Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> it sounds like I love you. Always have. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. <laughs> um, yes, the answer is yes, Skylar. Canadian kids also have fake girlfriends that live in America. Um but Fernando, sorry, you can't meet them. Sorry, unfortunately. Um Fernando Ramon at Only Big Fern raise, weighs in and he says, What is the opposite or reverse of a treehouse? Now I think what he's trying to play on here is Robert actually um, uh, brought up on the podcast on Saturday, the, the Monday episode this week, um, are trees just organic ladders? And I'm thinking he's like, what is the opposite of, of a tree house? Like, or what is the reverse of that? Um, I, I don't know. I think the opposite of a tree house is a, bird a house. A bird it's a house. house. No, it's a house plant. Because instead of having a house in a tree, you've got a plant inside of a house or a tree inside Absolutely of a house. What it, uh, yeah. It's a house plant. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Great answer. Robert? Great well answer. done. Yeah. Great answer. Yeah, well done, Pat. Well done, Pat. Good job, buddy. Uh, oh, thank you. I know you had it in you. <laughs> well, I just like to thank the rest of my team. It's, it's all Irish now. It's all, all Irish. the boys up in the Nova I Scotia are going to be so proud. <laughs> I've lost it. I can't even do it anymore. It's it's almost funny though. <laughs> um, Josh Tree Cottle at Joshua Tree Seven One Three. We also saw him Saturday, but he says, "Can throwing a boomerang be dangerous if you have ADHD?" Throwing a boomerang is always dangerous. I would say throwing a boomerang is dangerous in general. Um, if you have ADHD or ADD, yeah, I would definitely think it, it would be because, you know, you maybe get sidetracked. You don't pay attention and boom, boomerang comes right back, whacks you right in the head. I mean, there's a guy in the Suicide Squad where his name is Captain Boomerang. He literally takes people out with boomerangs. It's a dangerous weapon. It's it not a toy. It's a weapon. It's a weapon. I mean, that's which is kind of, you know, if you think about it, anything is a weapon. Just whether or not it's a good weapon or not, it's all up for debate. That's true. Just one more reason why everything is a boomerang. And anybody that's not who tries true. to convince you otherwise is wrong. That's not true. A boomerang is a weapon. Everything is a boomerang, which therefore everything is a weapon. No. Just, just mostly shitty weapons. I can weaponize anything. I can't boomer boomerangize anything. Well, you can't boomerang well. But I can turn anything into a good weapon. No, you can't. Bet. Give me an object. Although, Name an object. Name an um, object. I'll tell you how I can weaponize it. Uh, just like a piece of construct, uh, confetti. Confetti. Just one oh, man, piece of confetti. You, oh, man. I'm going to take that confetti and I'm going to shove it's it into your big. eye. I'm going to shove it into your eye. It's going to be It's gonna be super uncomfortable. Not but like, I, no, I don't think that plays. That's, see, it's a shitty weapon. That's so a good weapon. weapon. Stick something in your eye. Leave it there. No, tell I'm not going how, to tell, do that. But I don't think tell, you could do tell it. Tell me how effective you are the rest of the day. I could, I could run pat. I could run away from you. No, because you would only have one eye, so you'd fuck up your depth perception and you'd run into. No, something. but I'm saying I could run away from you to avoid you doing it in the first place. So. Until you ran into something. That'd no, be a no, you could No, I'm, I, I, I'm good in the first ten yards. I'd catch you in the first ten. No, I doubt it. Yeah, doubt it. I, I got I'm, show show I, I idea. I think I got a little more gas in the tank. Show idea. It's it's like the first forty eight, but it's the first ten, and it's just people trying to escape me for ten yards. And if we do, we get your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Take it. There's nothing in there. It's usually like four bucks. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I think a house plan is definitely 
Oh no, house house plants reverse of a treehouse, and then yes, a boomerang is definitely dangerous if you have ADHD because it's just it's dangerous in general, but it's still dangerous if you have ADHD. That's a good question, Josh. And before that, Fernando, um, Todd Voss at as underscore seen underscore by underscore TV. He weighs in and says, when an actual Marlin is adopted by the past the gravy pod family to be the mascot, what will it be named? Dairy. Uh, I think it's either Darlin or Darla. Ooh, Darla, if it's a girl. Uh, how do you tell? On a sort of vagina? Or on a Marlin? I don't fucking know. Darla, if it's a girl. <laughs> Whatever it identifies as, dude. And Marley, if it's a boy? Marley works. Yeah. Marley works or Brando. For both. Brando. Was the dog a boy or a girl in Marley and Me? I think it was a boy. But I know a girl named Marley. I thought it was a girl. I don't know. But I regardless, know. I, never I saw think it. too sad. Marley was also um, in Christmas Carol, right? Maybe we just do Darla or Daryl. Darla, Daryl would also work, but I like I like uh, Brando as the like name for a dude because it would be Marlon Brando. Oh, that's a good one. I like that. So I think Brando if it's a dude, and Darla if it's a chick. Yep, that's it. That's it. And if anybody can catch us, a Marlon that like also has a tank we could keep it in in Robert's house um then then yes please do it robert you would have to take care of it so because <laughs> i know that pat and i would kill it so not because we didn't love it but we would like lenny it from my Zimu. i just loved it so much i just wanted to hug her and i forgot she needed water i no, forgot would... she she needed to be uh, in underwater and i hugged her too long and now she's dead i would probably just get drunk and be like she looks tasty no. I'm going to eat her. <laughs> I ate our pet. <laughs> just have a pool and just let it live in the pool. Like, that's it. it I'm pretty it's, sure it would need salt water. It's just a pool. Well, we could get a saltwater pool. Those are things. <sighs> those are very expensive. Those, those are things, but we could get them. Um, so, yeah, I think Darla for a girl and Brando for a dude. Uh, our final, or no, not final. We have one more after that, but Brett Brandon at price of a ZJ who got fucking proposed or who proposed on our fucking podcast. He didn't get proposed to, he did a proposal on our podcast, Pastor Gravy, the podcast of love. If you didn't see it, go check out our Twitter page, our Facebook page, our Instagram. We got the video of that for sure. That was, uh, I can't tell you how cool it was to get to be a part of that for it. Like, like I know how awesome it was for you. And it felt like, even though we did absolutely nothing, um, it, it felt like we got to be, you know, a tiny little that's, part of it. And we we're, were happy to be involved. True. We didn't do nothing. You held his child and made her cry. I, did. So well, that he could I didn't make her cry. That. Her dad not being in her sight, I think, made her cry. I'd like to think. Because she didn't cry <laughs> until he walked away. And then we were high-fiving before she left. So we were tight. Me and Eleanor yeah. were cool. And still best friends. But um, shout out Eleanor. But um, yeah, uh, congratulations to to Brett and Paula on the engagement. And thanks again for letting Pat's gravy be a part of it. I would also like to remind you again um, that Pat is ordained and I will also do any sort of ordainment, whatever that needs to be done. So boom. There you can be an usher. I'd be an usher. You should get have two priests marry. You, you have, have you have to dress as usher. Marry, yeah. I could, yeah. <laughs> Oh, which side am I sitting on? The right side? Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> I'm in the club with my homie. What? <laughs> oh, we're going to ruin their wedding. It's going to be so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, y'all are definitely not coming now. Um, <laughs> but Brett says, why is it spelled camouflage and not? And then there's just a blank space right there. Um, I think just so we can read it. Yeah. I mean, you got to be able to like, you know, it's like the orange camouflage where it's like we can see it, but we know that the deer it's camouflage too. So it's like, that's the orange camouflage of words is the word camouflage. 
Yeah. You, you know, honestly, really have I to never... write the word camouflage in orange so it sticks out like that. So deer can't see it still. I never, I'm not going to lie, until this moment, I never really understood the orange camouflage, but I guess it makes sense that deer are probably colorblind, huh? That's what I was led to believe as someone that does not hunt. Yeah, I've, I've never put like actual thought into it. Because it doesn't seem like if it, it seems like it I've always sticks like, out yeah. for other hunters, but the deer don't see it. But then you also still usually wear it over your camouflage, but it would be weird to blow up your spot by wearing, you know, like a bright orange vest over a camouflage where you're trying to blend in. I've always thought that was weird. I'm like, yeah, like other hunters can see you, but like, can't the deer? But that makes sense. Deer, <laughs> like, deer hey, are probably dude. colorblind. <laughs> I feel really dumb that it took me Robert, thir- can you see 30 orange? almost 30 years to figure that out. Or almost 31. Yes, I can. But I mean sometimes it can be difficult like when mixed with red and stuff. Okay. Like, if I was trying to make a Robert camouflage, what would what colors would I go with? And like I like like it would be orange and red mixed. So I got so it. Is- uh Deer are essentially red, green, colorblind, like some humans. So basically, deer have the exact same vision as Robert. Because you're red, okay. green, right? Or, or, or wait, yeah. or were you okay? As a result, deer can likely distinguish red from or blue from red, but not green from red or orange from red. So I guess they can still like see it, but they can't distinguish it from. So maybe like orange would work better in the fall. I bet you you get shot more. I don't know. Uh, I think it's really just because we have to be able to write the word camouflage. That's why I think the camouflage is spelled that way. Brett, but those are a great yes. question. Those are a great question. I thought a great debate was sparked because of it. Um, our final question of the week comes from our girl, Alexis Garcia at Alexis Texas underscore on Twitter. And she said, did social media kill high school reunions? I'm going to say no, because we have had a high school reunion in that. I understand her logic though, because like a lot of it is like, dude, I already see all your shit, dude. Like (laughs) we get it. You're into like Mary Kay. Now you're selling Mary Kay on the side. You got like, you're, you're working out a lot, you know, like you got cool. You got kids. Like I see all of that shit where it used to be. I, I think like you'd show up to a high school reunion. And like, oh, you're married. You have two kids. That's really crazy. And it's like, yeah, I know <laughs> you post about it every day. I see for their for, names are, their names are Bob and Steve and they're this old and this is their hobbies. They play soccer. I know that <laughs> I've seen it on Facebook. I mean, the question definitely makes sense. I'm with you on that, but, uh, for, and everything is a social uh, uh, every social media interaction almost nowadays could be like just like a high school reunion that's true i know that i'm like in a group that people invited me to it was like you know you went to sam if and it's like a sam houston group and it's just people talking about like random shit that they, they remembered from sam houston randomly and it's like that is kind of like an internet reunion of people that are not all the people that graduated with me but it's like when we were in when we were in our the year of our reunion pat when we had our 10-year reunion uh, we had that like Cinco Ranch group that yeah. like, we were like, people were talking and then it started, it was kind of funny. Cause we were like, Hey, remember when so-and-so did this? And there was like about a month of that. And then everybody got burned out on it and just didn't fucking do anything. It's like, when is the fucking reunion? All right, cool. I'll be there then. <laughs> like, but like, there was like a, like a month of like, just like, ha, this is funny. This is re- I remember when so-and-so did this to this teacher. Like that was like kind of cool. And I think that that's just what Facebook is. That's what the, internet also is. our graduating class was like 695 people. <laughs> so like if you had a if you if you had a graduating class of like 86 people i feel like the reunion isn't as fun because you're like yeah there's i only talked to like eight of you anyway but i still knew the other 80 right <laughs> it's just like uh it's not as hard but like when it's that many people you're like fuck you can't keep track of anybody so it's different what, what you need to do though is that sam houston one i need you to troll it the way you troll houston morning posts like, you know, you went to Sam Houston when you they made you leave X bar when it hit two o'clock nice in the morning. Cheers. Or just like post action. I don't know. What was your favorite bar there? Uh, shenanigans. Shout out. Shenanigans. So just be like, yeah, you know, you went to Sam Houston when they made you leave shenanigans at two o'clock in the morning. And People would just be like, yeah, cheers. that's no, but still just do like actual ones. So like, yeah, because that was closing time. 
<laughs> well, they kicked you out at 2 30. Like, you, you know, you know, you went to Sam Houston if your communications degree was in the Dan Rather building. But, well, yeah, but <laughs> you know, you went, you know, you went to Sam Houston if when you graduated, you had to walk across the stage to get your diploma. <laughs> what? You know, you went to Texas Tech if you got an STD called Raider Rash. <laughs> Would, would be a good U of H one, Robert. Uh, I have no idea. You I, know I, you went to U of H if you can't walk on campus after dark. Too real. <laughs> 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 and on that note, everybody. You know you went to U of H if your school's hand sign is also a sex sign. You know if you went to U of H if your school's letters also spell out uh. <laughs> nailed it all right and i think that's about it that, that's about as good as we're gonna do here on this podcast guys that's our that's our cue to uh end this thank you guys for tuning in uh darling like a marlin blackberry sour still available at southern star brewing company go get the cans 3525 north fraser street up in connor let them know you're from the gravy gang i appreciate everybody that came out to the event everybody that even if you couldn't go out to the event that just supported us from afar uh, if you bought a darn like a marlin shirt that's awesome you can still buy darn like a marlin shirts as well as i know we got fourth of july coming up we got our usa american ptg shirts that you can get still at, at pastorgravymerch.com i am at alex j middleton pets at not pat dan robert is at robert barbosa zero three and our podcast is at pastor pod robert has a podcast every monday called a recent study suggests recent a recent study pod you can follow it on twitter and instagram go give them a listen every monday and uh give them a five-star review on itunes spotify wherever you're listening to podcasts i do the claire big blue podcast at cbb pod if you want to give that a follow we have episodes every tuesday and uh check out the disappointed but not surprised podcast they got episodes every week the weekly d podcast time machine with andrew green all of that and then i shout out to our buddy our buddy mundo he has the 715 podcast go check that out too if, if you want if you're listening for podcasts like we got you set all right there's plenty of stuff to listen to until next week listen to them all and uh subscribe and get hit that five star review and uh anything else from anybody no no all right all right wheel wheel couches we'll bring those back we'll bring those back just let summer i think there's some some legs there but uh you guys have a great rest oh, of there's week. not because it's a wheelchair but well, no, but you don't have to be wheelchair bound to be in a wheel couch. I'm just saying. Um, but fuck, you just threw me out. I hope the rest of y'all's week is darling like a marlin, guys. I love y'all. Until we talk to get until we talk again next time. Pass the gravy. Yeah. Bitches. I caught it back in the day. You and me with a call to your place. Ain't been out in a while anyway. Was hoping I could catch you throwing smiles in my face. Oh, man, ain't talking, you don't even have to try. Cute enough to fuck with me